Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. There is no one else like you who is faithful ever true. All my love, my heart, my life is a testimony. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. Only you are wonderful. There is no My love, my heart, my life is a testimony. Let's do it one more time. Only you are holy. Only you are worthy. invite you to stand. We're going to be reading from Revelation chapter 4. Praise the Lord Jesus. We're reading from verse 1 to the end. Revelation chapter 4. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Revelation chapter 4. After this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which thou must, sorry, which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne, in sight like unto emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four bees which each sorry, and the four bees had each of them six wings about them, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when the 
Those beasts gave glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Praise the Lord. We're going to pray. Let's unite our voices. Lord, we thank you for grace. We thank you for mercies. We thank you for provision. We are grateful, Lord, that we can assemble ourselves this evening to study your words. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. And as we are in your presence, we look to you for leading and direction. We pray, God, that your presence will move among us freely. You'll touch our minds, touch our bodies. Help us, God, to focus on your word as it is being taught. I pray for a special anointing upon our teacher this evening. I pray that you'll touch our pastor, touch our body, touch our mind. Use her for your glory that when the word is taught, it will be presented in such a way that it will be clearly understood. Let your presence rest with us, Lord Jesus. For we cannot do anything by ourselves. We pray for those who are joining us online that God you'll minister to them. We pray that God you'll cover them. You'll help them God to want to see the need to be assembled physically as much as is possible. We pray there God for even those who are not present in Jamaica. Those who are joining us from overseas. We pray that you'll bless them in a very special way. Show up tonight we pray Lord Jesus. As the word is being taught. We open our hearts to receive. Have your way, we pray, as we surrender ourselves in your hands. In Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I'd like to invite Pastor Brissy to come. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Thank you, Minister Drisdale. And let me greet everyone in the name that is above all the other names. And that name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Glad to have you here, those who, can, who I can see and those who I cannot see. <laughs> Hallelujah. I realize that we have... People say a sizable audience. Is that a word, sizable? You know what they mean? Yeah, I noticed. Ah, last week was what, 118. Let us pray that <laughs> we will grow. I would really love to see people come. Come to the house of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Deacon Burke, bless the Lord, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Good to see you, Brother Burke. Where is Sister Burke? <laughs> all right, don't answer. That's all right. <laughs> hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need, we need to go into a good session of um, prayer and fasting and believing the Lord for a revival. We can't just be satisfied. Let us feel the satisfaction deep in our souls and, and do something about it. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are still on the topic. Uh, if we, we can finish this week. Praise the Lord Jesus. And I do hope that something from our studies will remain with us. And you can do your study, do your reading, and, and add. Amen? Amen? The Praise the Lord Jesus. I give God thanks for the strength. Amen. And for the ability to be able to Read a little better. Praise the Lord Jesus. You continue to pray for me because, you know, <laughs> there are so many changes. Amen. You know, uh, I was in the supermarket earlier and a lady whom I do not know was saying, we were talking, you know, about shopping because it seemed as if most of us did not really 
shop for you know the protein area, the meats, fresh meat, because we're preparing for the hurricane. And then she said, she don't know what is it about Jamaica, but there's something about Jamaica and God. <laughs> so I said, Jamaica still have some praying people in spite of. Praise the Lord Jesus, because when I see what's happening in Tobago, I said, Tobago don't have anywhere to take weather. Because in half an hour, you drive around Tobago. <laughs> you know, and it's, and it's chief the water. The, the, the Atlantic Ocean on one side and the Caribbean Sea on the other side. You know, we have to pray for those people. Because in, in, in Florida, they are still counting. Oh, God. May God help us. Let's not take the grace of God for granted. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Last week, we ended on an aspect which speaks to relationship with unbelievers. Oh God, hallelujah. Saints of God, let us try our best. Not to turn off people from the church. The decisions we make, you know, can affect people's perception of the church and of God. Amen. Many times you hear people say, and when he done him, say I'm a Christian. You know? Yes. Oh, God, help us. I can't forget what that lady said to her co-worker. That if she's going to heaven, she's a very poor specimen. I never forget it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, yes. We are called to be light and to be salt. I remember saying that last week. And we should not give anyone reason to criticize the apostolic faith. Amen. Never be a stumbling block to others. Better you, you are looked upon as a fool. Amen. Than to be a stumbling block. Ha, oh God. I think one writer in the scripture said that he even restored that which he did not take. Yes, he gave it back. Although it wasn't him. But some of us, man, we stick out for our right. Amen. You are, you are showing maturity when you can give up your right for peace. It's a sign of maturity. Bless the Lord Jesus. And remember, maturity doesn't come with age. It should be. But it's not so. Amen. Yeah, we, we should get wiser, you know, when, when we age. But... but it's not really like that. But we need more of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, more of God. Always keeping the soul in mind. Hmm? Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This evening, under God, we'd like to look at a little topic that speaks to the presence of God. Amen. Little children sing in their morning hymn, God is always near me. Amen. And that is true. Hallelujah. We want to read one verse of Psalm 16. We want to read verse 11. Verse 11 of Psalm 16. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. For the past several weeks, we have been looking on aspects of the Pentecostal worship. What is the profit of all this? 
the worship I'm talking about, if the presence of God is not evident. Hallelujah. Yes, we can have many activities, but where is God in all of this? Amen. God is a spirit. Yes, we should know it by now. Yes, he's a spirit, but that's not where I'm going, really. <laughs> but he manifests himself in various ways. Praise the Lord Jesus. We have mentioned many times aspects of the tabernacle. You know, you know that is a very broad subject. Amen. Amen. The high priest went into the most holy place once per year and offered what he's offering for himself and for the people. Amen. There was no need for light in the most holy place. I wonder why. Yes, the presence of the Lord supplied that lighting in the most holy place. Thank you, Jesus. We know that Moses had a special relationship with God. Hallelujah. You know, he, he, he spoke with Moses face to face. And we know that Moses was so close to God until... Scripture said the people could not steadfastly look at him when he came from the mountain. And so he had to veil his face. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. So God promised to meet with Moses and to commune with him above the mercy seat that was in that inner place of the tabernacle. We can look for that at Exodus 25, 22. Now, we should not treat the things of God lightly. Hallelujah. Some of us are blessed, and we don't even know that we are blessed. It is a privilege, saints and friends, mm, and an honor to be able to feel the presence of the Lord. Yes, the presence of the Lord can be felt. Amen. And many times the presence of the Lord is so evident among us. Thank you, Jesus. One should cherish, or I would say treat very kindly, the presence of God. Hallelujah. I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. I must feel his presence near me and his arms around me thrown. I remember a dear sister who is now deceased. Sometimes when she would feel the presence of the Lord, she would hug herself and rock. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord was so close. Can sinners feel the presence of the Lord? Somebody said yes. Somebody went it back. Huh? Sinners, can they feel the presence of the Lord? I believe so. And, and they, they respond in different ways as well. But I want to remind us, everyone, that the presence of the Lord is more than a, what I call a jig. Amen. Or, or, or a shout. You, you can be very quiet, hallelujah, yet you are experiencing the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We don't need a crowd to be able to feel God's presence either. No, we don't need a crowd. Let us read Matthew 18 and verse 20 and remind ourselves of what it says. Matthew 18 and verse 20. 
For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Thank you. You know, we come together and, and we have this space here. And it's, it's not a good feeling when we are a few. But we need to remind ourselves that God is here. Excuse me. Yes, God is here. Jesus said, well, I am in the midst of them. So let's make the Lord welcome among us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, yes. Let's make him feel very, very welcome among us. Now God's presence can cause you to fear and reverence him when he draws near. Hallelujah. Sometimes you are wondering what to do with myself now. Some people put their hand at the head and they ball. You know ball? Re real ball. Some people get a holy roll. Some jump and skip. Oh, I can't forget that brother in convention one year. Years ago, he ran on the top of all the benches in the temple because he was just feeling the presence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Amen. So there's this reverential fear. Hallelujah. You know, Leviticus is a good book to read, or the book of the, 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 the law and all of that. In chapter 9 of Leviticus, 22 to 24, it gives a story about offering a sacrifice. But the scripture says, fire came out from before the Lord and consumed hallelujah sacrifice they didn't have to light it we know that Abraham went with his, his wood and, and probably took his fire with him too amen but this time fire came out from the Lord and consumed the sacrifice the people were watching hallelujah and when they saw it I think they were shrouded with this fear. So the scripture said they shouted. So shout is a part of it. I was thinking about this group sometime during the course of this week. And I said we have gotten very quiet. Oh Lord, help us. We, have, we are losing the excitement. Amen. But when the people saw what happened, the spontaneous fire... They shouted and fell upon their faces. People call that prostrate. Amen. They prostrated before the Lord. They fell on their faces when they saw what happened. Huh? Fire came out before the Lord. From the Lord, sorry. That's fire it's still evident. On the day of Pentecost, the Bible says, cloven tongues of fire. They sat upon each. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. What a wonderful thing for when we come together. Everybody will be anointed. Amen. Glory to God Almighty. And you know something, saints? When the one or the two get anointed, you know, I think we should join with them. Hallelujah. Yes, clap with them and jump and stamp with them and give God the glory. Is that all the while? You're going to wait on the spirit as it were before you can dance, you know. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. We praise the name of the Lord. We, we worship God in dances, you know. What the Bible said, after the cross the Red Sea, Miriam took our tambourine. Timbrel, and she started to sing. And the women joined her. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, if one person gets anointed and, and, and start to march around, around the space, eh? why we should be just spectators? Huh? Run behind the person and shout to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not joking. I'm serious about it. Oh, God. 
Mm. Now, God still manifests himself in peculiar ways. We can't figure out God, you know, and tell you how God is going to work on Sunday. I don't know. Hallelujah. Now, as a people, we also respond to God in various ways, different ways. As I said earlier, some people might just sit and cry. Hallelujah. Clap their hands. They are responding to the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Some people love dancing. You know? I don't know why, but as long as they are praising the Lord, that's all right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But what is stiff and military when we come in the presence of God? We need some Holy Ghost flexibility. I can't forget a sister from abroad testified many years ago. You know, and those old time ones used to come. They are all past now. But I still remember some of their words. She testified that people always love to come to convention in Jamaica. Because when they come, you know, the, the shouting and the dancing and the rejoicing and, and all of that. But she said, I didn't come to Jamaica to get the starch out of me. When I got the Holy Ghost, I lost the starch. Hallelujah. Amen. So what I mean by stiff and military. Oh, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> we cannot allow ourselves to get used to experiencing the manifestation of God. You use it and it doesn't mean anything to you again. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? Somebody speaking in tongues, and you're so used to speaking in tongues, it doesn't mean anything that you don't even get quiet and, and see if God is sending us a word. Amen. Amen. Every time God moves in us and through us and among us, we should have this all about it and this expectancy that God is getting our attention and that God is about to speak God is about to move hallelujah glory to God you can't get used to the scripture said as these people when the sacrifice was, was being offered you, you know as they view the glory of God they knew it wasn't just an ordinary thing they trembled and they fell on their faces. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We love to read the scripture in Isaiah 6. Isaiah saw the Lord. How did he see him? High and lifted up. The angels expressed holy. 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 And the scripture said, God's glory fill the temple. Amen. That's what I want to experience here. Not just in pockets. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, God, fill this temple with your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When that happened, glory, Isaiah saw himself as unworthy. And he cried out, Whoa, it's me. Yes. You see, the man knew that he was human. He knew his, his failings. He knew his weaknesses as a man. So even when we feel the presence of God, it's not because we are, we are so special. Eh? Not because our lives may be cut above the rest. Eh? The glory of God should help us to see ourselves as we are. Undone. And need to be fixed. Glory to God Almighty. So when Isaiah confessed, an angel took a live coal, not a dead coal. Hallelujah. I mean a burning coal. Where it came from? From off the altar. The altar was in a physical place. It's no more a physical place, but to me, it's a condition of your spirit. But the angel took 
a live coal from the altar. Yeah. What did he do with it? Placed on his mouth as if saying, Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins purged. Yeah. Amen. Isaiah 6, 6 to 7. Praise the name of the Lord. As Pentecostals or Apostolics or Christians, our worship is often considered to be very demonstrative. We don't, you know, we move, we clap our hands and rock our bodies, we stamp our feet. Amen. All of this is because of the, or should be, let me say that, should be because of the presence of the Lord. It's the presence of the Lord that makes a difference. As you're stamping, we'll be just stamping. Like you're stamping a centipede or a roach. Oh my God Almighty. It is different when you stamp your feet and raise your hands and nod your heads because of the presence of the Lord. But what is the greatest evidence of the presence of the Lord? What will you say it is? Nobody has anything to say? When someone gets the Holy Ghost? All right, that's your opinion. Anybody else? The greatest evidence that God is at work in you. It's not the shouting. It's not the singing. Thank you, Brother Drisdale. You are into, yes, the changed life. Oh, my God. Something happens. There is a difference. You used to be quarrelsome with your spouse or your children or so. You find that you are changing. Amen. Because you are conscious that something happened. And there's a difference. Thank you, Lord. Life is changed. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We love you, Jesus. We often talk about the touch of God. And we sing, touch me again, Lord. Amen. Amen. Touch of God brings about change. Sometimes you see the hardened sinners just, just weeping. You know, becoming penitent. Because there is change. The move of God in a service or in a life will make a difference. And people will be delivered. We don't have to have a special deliverance ministry. Hmm? People will be delivered from physical ailments and spiritual ailments. Hallelujah. Yes, just like a little breeze blows and you see the leaves, some of them blow off, the limbs bowing, Sometimes the fruit's falling. Hallelujah. Spirit of the Lord. Don't, don't tell me that, that you have the Holy Ghost and you go to church and you're honest and, and, and all of that. And you can't be delivered from bad habits and so on. You are the same old, same old. Amen. You so trace this and cuss that and you are the same. You, you haven't learned to walk away. Hallelujah. I bless your name, Jesus. We need deliverance in the services. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 17 says, Now the Lord is that spirit. Amen. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Freedom. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, in reading and so on, you find that in the church of a living God, people are not on speaking terms. Huh? And, and that's why the attendance sometimes at Lord's Supper, not what it ought to be. Okay, so let a man examine himself. So I have examined myself and find that I'm not free with X or Y. 
and you do nothing about it? Huh? Hallelujah. When God reveals something to you, the intent is for you to work on it. You hear Isaiah confess? Woe is me, because I am a man of unclean lips and, and whatever, whatever. And he was administered a, a live coal. Hallelujah. That purged him and, you know, make him fit to stand in the presence of the Lord. I bless the Lord Jesus. The Lord is that spirit. As I thought about, about it, you know, I have my peculiar way of, of expressing things. And I said there's depth. Deep. There's something deep about the presence of the Lord. There's width. Something also wide. And there's height. Glory to God Almighty. Every dimension you can think of in the presence of the Lord. So it takes you deeper, yeah. broader, wider, and it takes you higher. Yeah. It gives you boldness. Sometimes some shy people, we say they just come out of their skin. It's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Sorry. As I thought about God, I said there is much more about God than we can ever know. Hallelujah. We can't fathom God. Just a little bit of, we get all the time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Romans 11, verse 33. Can you read that, please? Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Amen. The ways of God are past finding out. Hallelujah. The more you know, is the more there is to know, and the more you want to know. Past finding out the ways of God. Sometimes, you know, when God moves and brings something to light, you, you really have to just sigh. Hmm? That's why they said, the old lady, they said what? Oh, God trickifies so? up. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Is there anything that my God can do? My God is so what? Big. Is there anything? Is there any? Oh my God, it turned water into wine, you see? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He can do everything. My God can do everything in his own time. I praise the name, Jesus. Hallelujah. As we read the book of Genesis, we are reminded that the first man, Adam, enjoyed a good relationship with God, a harmonious relationship. But when sin came, this was spoiled. The one who used to appear in the presence of God started to hide from God. Amen. You know, if you used to come to church and you stop coming, watch that spirit. You know, I asked for a young man today who I know was going to an apostolic church. And I was told that he backslid and started drinking and smoking. Huh? You exchange that for the presence of the Lord? So I said, you know, I'm going to have a word with him. He doesn't have to come to what people call my church. Any church. Hallelujah. I'm going to have a word with him. You know? Oh, may God help me to find the right words. Amen. So this relationship was spoiled. When sin came, you know, looked so enticing and all of that. But, you know, God always seeks to restore the relationship. Although many times, discipline is involved as well. Amen. I know Adam would have liked to go back to the garden, but God placed an angel 
with a flaming, and the Bible said turned. Hallelujah. It rotated on its own to protect that entrance. Hallelujah. You know God still protects you. <laughs> you better believe it. You think about it, the sword that turn. Huh? The sword, automatic. I thank God for his protection. God is actively seeking to have this good relationship with man. Because man, every man, shared something of God. Because God breathed the breath of life into man and he became a living soul. Look how intelligent man is. Huh? When I think of it, you see, I, I, I walk and talk to myself sometimes, you know. And I was saying yesterday, when I used to hear about every man getting a mark for the Antichrist in the time of the beast and so on, I was saying, where are they going to find every single man to mark him? Huh? But now you just go so. Huh? I was telling somebody, say, I don't know what happened to my, 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 my face ID that was on, on this sophisticated phone that I have. I just I have one, you know, so I can fix it. And, you know, after she fixed it, I said, let me show you something. And she looked on my phone, and my phone name is like, <laughs> The phone doesn't know her. Imagine a phone knows your face. Hmm? There is a man, <laughs> oh Lord, was living in my area, you know, when I was a teenager. You know, teenagers make fun of everything. And when he would say some things, make them up, you know, and say them, he said, beat that. Amen. Yeah. Look where technology has reached. We used to marvel about the, the, the telephone because it used to be it used to be telegram. And when somebody was sharing the space, the same space where I'd lived, she was being trained to be this, this telegraph clerk. And she used to be studying the symbol. And she would say, dash, that, 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 saying them to know them by heart. You know? Because when they are sending a telegram, you wouldn't say, come now. Do you have some series of dots and dashes and, and those things. No? But we have gone past that long ago. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Lord, help us. Lord, help us, Jesus. Yes. Sin spoiled things, but God is still God of the universe. So he's still seeking, actively seeking to a relationship with man. That's why he came in the form of man. Hallelujah. And every man needs God. Amen. There was a tabernacle, which we mentioned earlier. And the presence of the Lord was evident in the tabernacle and in the temple as well. Remember when Solomon <coughs> was dedicating that temple? Hallelujah. And you know, the musicians said they were as one. Everything was just precise. You know, we are doing anything for God. It should be well done. It should be well done. Even taking on the cobweb. Amen. Painting the sanctuary. It should be well done. God is a God of order. So when I'm looking, if the sun is up, I don't look that way. I look that way. In the east. Hallelujah. Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And from I'm living where I'm living, Rare Grand is in the same place. Amen. Although we know rivers can change course and all of that, you know, but I don't look in a different place because God is a God of order. God expects you to serve Him in spirit and in truth. And that's why He gave you the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. So the presence of God was evident in these places. But God is no longer resident in a fixed place, in a house. 
We are the ones who, who, why God is here. Amen. Hallelujah. He now is housed in man. That's where he resides. Amen. Is God in you? Do you have space for him? Hallelujah. Huh? Christmas carol, based on uh, Mary's experience being turned away from the inn. Huh? Yes. And the song said, have you any room for Jesus? Huh? And it said, room for pleasure and room for business. But for Christ the crucified, not a room that he can enter in the heart for which he died. We're not hearing those songs again either. Amen. He resides in me, he resides in you. So I want to make room for Jesus. Clean and nice too. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus. God himself became a person, as I said earlier. Not a person became God. Big difference, see? Thank you, Jesus. And we know we have our references in the book of John and also in 1 Timothy 3.16. Hmm? The mystery of godliness. And in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Hallelujah. Those are little scriptures that we should know by heart. Thank you, Jesus. God desires full contact and fellowship with mankind. Amen. There is much more of God for you. We don't reach anywhere in God yet, you know. Hallelujah. There's much more that we, we should actively seek after. So all of us are satisfied. We get the Holy Ghost and speak in tongues. And we reach, we have arrived. No, there's so much in God that He can, he can wake you up in the night and, and speak to you and you pray and, uh, and all of that. Thank you, Jesus. You speak sometimes comfort in people's spirit. You know, you rebuke sometimes. That's God. Hallelujah. Full contact and fellowship, man. You have got to desire, desire more of him. Amen. You, you know, when I was young, I used to practice some things. And they used to work. You know, like somebody's away over there, and you want the person, and you don't want to shout. I just focus on the person. And the person had to turn. There's something. You never tried it? Try it, it works. Yeah, I just focus on the person. And all of a sudden. Yes. You didn't know that yes, first thing? Yeah. I used to practice a lot. You know? Amen. We have some of God in us. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm seeking more of him. God dwells within us by the power of the Holy Ghost. We are empowered to change our world. We are change agents in the church, in our communities, in your families. Hallelujah. You know, every time I think about it, and I first got saved and others from my immediate family and then it extending. And I say, thank you, Jesus. And um, I'm telling you, even those who don't accept it, they know it. Huh? Yes. And they share their story. How people know the doctrine and know the gospel, although they don't accept it. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Let us continue. We are empowered to change our world. Remember that statement. God just did give the power just to jump and shout. When last have you witnessed to somebody? Eh? I've been pondering, help me to pray, about a young man who I want to, to witness to. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We're in power to change our world. We sit down with more from a fret about the situation. Huh? God gives you the power to change your world. Your world. Some of us, we seek too much comfort in this world. Amen. We want to be comfortable. We don't want nobody to trouble me and, 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 and all those sort of things. Change your world. We are designed to continue Jesus' ministry. He said it before he left. He said, greater works you're going to do. Whether it is in scope or, or, or power, I don't know. Hallelujah. So, we must here on earth maintain or continue what Jesus used to do. We need a life of obedience to the word. Amen. Some of us don't obey the word, you know. We are our own pastor. Hallelujah. Yes, past ourselves. We set our own standards. But think what spirit is generating the anti, whatever you want, anti-doctrine and anti-rule and anti-whatever. God is a God of order, as I mentioned earlier. He's a God of order. He still is. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us live to maintain God's presence in our lives. I don't want anything to turn off God. Huh? Hallelujah. I want to be at peace. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And being at peace doesn't does mean to sit down and fold your arms and keep quiet, you know. When, when you search yourself, you see that there's no animosity, there's no hatred, there's no envy. Eh? We need to search ourselves now because we are human beings and these things creep in. Unawares too. Amen. Hallelujah. I want God to dwell within me. Let us look at the fear of the Lord. One woman said to me, I not only fear God, no, I'm afraid of him. We don't have to be afraid of God. Fear of terror. Amen? Have a fear of reverence. God is so good to me, I can't let him down. Hallelujah. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? When he's so good to me. Praise the Lord. Yes. No afraid God, fear him. Amen? You know, God dealt with Israel in a special way. But they have never developed that closeness with God. They were more afraid of God. Oh yes, oh yes. Instead of fearing him and reverence him. Bless the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Although God was so good to them, and they saw the miracles, you know, how, how would I really react when I see the Red Sea open, roll up as mountain on both sides, and you go through on dry land? Huh? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then you see the sea rolling back, taking back its place. And, and, and uh, so many people drowned. I remember sharing with you that uh, a man who knew about archaeology went down to Israel and they had a display because, you know, they embalmed the bodies in Egypt. And... Uh, he saw one of the pharaohs, which was dark. And I asked why that one was dark. He said, that one died by drowning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, Pharaoh was, was, was in there too, to bring back the Israelites, they say. But Israel continued to rebel. 
they were fed every day. It's so nice just to go and pick up your food. I feel I would pick up some this evening. Glory to God. Yes. And, and they say, our soul loathe or hate this light bread. And the Bible tells you that man did eat angel food. Huh? Angel food they were fed by. Hallelujah. And they're calling it light bread. And they faced it, you know. Lord Jesus. You know, they spoke against God. Amen? Because there was not any grave. And they spoke against God's leader too. Telling Moses because no grave never in Egypt. Why you carry us here to die in the wilderness? When the death is because of their own ways. Their own disobedience. Amen. It wasn't God's will for them to die. God's will for them to all cross over. But they murmured and they complained. Nothing suit them. They missed the garlic, the cucumber, the onions. Eh? Lord Jesus, almighty help us. Oh God, sometimes we have to endure some hardness for a better way in the long run. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I think because children love study where they study, very few love to study. Huh? But they're looking towards the future. Hallelujah. And so to speak against God and the people who were chosen by God to lead them at one stage. You know, they were talking against Aaron and probably they felt it's because it's Moses' brother. Hallelujah. But God said, all right, let's agree on something here. Get the rods and put them, put them in the tabernacle. Right? And in the morning, any rod that, that blossom and bore them, that's God's choice. And so they mark, can you imagine them mark the name on the rod to and they lay them out. And the morning, Aaron's rod blossom and bud and bear almonds. Praise the name of the Lord. That was in the tabernacle for years. Aaron's rod that budded. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes God had to do some drastic things to prove certain things, you know. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Help us, Lord. Oh, God, I just said that there's a beautiful story about what God can do with a dead stick. And we want to look at another side. The story is in Numbers 17. The presence of the Lord can work in your life for transformation and fruitfulness. So if you feel you're worthless, you're dry, huh? You cannot produce anything. Think of Aaron's rod. <clears throat> I could call myself a dry stick. Who am I and what am I? For God to help me to be able to stand and, and, to, and to speak. Praise the name of the Lord. It is a privilege. I was so many times, you better not sing because you can't sing. Amen. God didn't choose me because I can sing or because I can't sing. God chose me because of what he can do with me. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Not because I'm special. Hallelujah. God can make a, a dry, dead stick fruitful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we need to give ourselves more to the Lord, man. Huh? What are you doing for your church to enhance your church? What are you doing? Are you adding value, spiritual value to your church? I just become a habit to come in here. Let's think about that. What am I adding to my church? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. 
No matter how we feel the presence of the Lord, never you take that presence for granted. He didn't have to do it. But I want to exhort us right now. Let us create, create and maintain the conditions where God will be pleased to dwell and work wonders among us. Change your world, sister, brother, friend. See what you are not doing right or, or, or what you could put in some more. Hallelujah. Oh God. Everything, everything adds up. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What can you do? Sometimes do some simple things that can facilitate, make things easier, or hinder the working of the Almighty God. All those who are at home tonight and could come to church, they are not facilitators. What are they? Hinderers. Yes, they hinder. When your neighbor hear your TV on during service time, huh? what message is being sent? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What is the message we are sending? Think about it. We need to change, saints. Tell yourselves you are going to change. And I'm going to add some value to this congregation of which I'm a part. Amen. Not just, just to sit down and occupy a space. I want more than that. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People tell they have this to do, they have that to do. I tell them, I have studied and have to study hard too. But my studies have never prevented me from coming to God's house. Amen. No assignment. I did peace, peace. I would leave the book open when I was living here. Amen. I was speaking with somebody earlier. And I said that I know what it is to be fully engaged in, let's call it home duties, and to be doing assignments to meet deadlines. Amen. I remember, <laughs> thank you, Jesus, at 4 o'clock, I'd be on Irving bus. But I remember Irving bus. Yes, he had a big one and he had a small one. The bus light I used to read my literature books. Amen. So all are going around the junction, I'm reading my literature books. Amen. I didn't miss church to sit. Amen. And God helped me. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I just want to encourage us to put more. See what more you can put in it. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God, you are good. Oh, Jesus. Right now, I just feel a burden. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What can I do to make a difference? Amen? Oh, God. I, you know, I think some of us are too, what I should say, I don't want to say uncaring. We are not as involved as we should. Mm. You know, I was thinking today that we need to 
decide we're going to come here on Saturday mornings for prayer. Yeah? We're going to come, all those who have never been, because there's something to pray about. There's something, there's something to fast about and something to long for, something to desire. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I am not going to touch the other topic and rush through it. I'm going to leave it for next week. And that will be the last one. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. But do you have anything to add? Any questions you'd like to ask on what we have done about the presence of the Lord? Amen. Nothing at all. I am not hearing you. I give you thanks, Lord Jesus. You are so good. Yes, my brother, go ahead. Yes, someone in the chat wanted to know mm -hmm. where they could find out more about the story of Aaron. Of whom? Aaron. Aaron with the rod? That's one? Yes. Oh, what did I tell you? Where is it found? In Numbers? Where? Numbers 17. We had said it, you know. No, I didn't. It's a long story. You get the murmuring and... You want us to turn to it now? Let's turn to it. We have a little time. Because I can't even find it in my notes right now. It's towards the end. Numbers 17. It's, towards. it's a beautiful story. Do we have it in our Bibles? If you have a Bible... Please turn to Numbers 17. Leviticus then Numbers. I'm at 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, of all their princes, according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod, whom I shall choose, shall blossom, and I will make to cease from me the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and everyone, sorry, let me find this. Keep on reading these Bible leaves cling together. Somebody else keep reading. You're not hearing? And Moses spake unto the children of Israel, and every one of their princes gave him a rod, a piece, for each prince one according to their father's house, even twelve rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. And it came to pass that on the morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded and brought forth buds and blossomed blossoms and yielded almonds. Praise the Lord. I think that's enough. No? 
And Moses brought out all the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked and took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against rebels. And thou shalt quit, take, quite, sorry, quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. And Moses did so as the Lord commanded him, so did he. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish, we all perish. See, they were afraid of God. Yeah. <laughs> Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. <laughs> shall we be consumed with dying? Even that was a part of murmuring. Oh, Lord Jesus. Always, I always love this bit of story about Aaron's rod. Leadership they were talking about, you know. Everybody can't be leader who want to follow. If all our leaders, who is going to follow? Eh? And if some people know what leaders go through sometimes. Huh? You know what God himself said? It went ill with Moses. Huh? Because of Israel. They were quarreling and fussing so much, lacking in faith. Huh? That instead of Moses doing what? Speaking to the rock, what he did? He struck it in his anger and said, what did he say? Yes. Lord Jesus. And Moses was punished, wasn't allowed to enter. My God, I wonder how many pastors and ministers, congregation, cause to lose their way. Let's pray for our pastors and our leaders. Hallelujah. And don't speak evil against them. Nothing suit those people. I don't know it's because, well, there were slaves in Egypt, but it's everything in Jamaica now because our ancestors were slaves. So it's in us to rebel and go on bad. Huh? Rainfall and road move and then block the rest of it and be one road, one road, one. Oh, Jesus. Let's Christians be different. Hallelujah. That's my, that's my point. God is in us. Let's show people that there is a better way. There is a different way. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Your God and God alone. Amen. Any questions? Thank you and thank, thank the, the participant for wanting to know the scripture reference. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes? As we're talking about um, the children of Israel, that it's not like they feared God. It's like they were afraid of him. I remember the scripture. I was trying to figure it out. It said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Something Where do you think like. it is? That sounds like Solomon, you know. That's why I know my Bible. They said, that sounds like Solomon. Proverbs. Huh? But it's not wisdom I saw. There's our knowledge. Who said knowledge? What kind of what kind Proverbs of Proverbs one, I think, um, verse seven. What kind of Bible you have? King James. Oh. King and James. the whole time one too. Fear of God yeah. beginning of wisdom. Probably there's one that I says think so it too. Says knowledge. I know that um I read that part before. But you can't find it? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay. That's what I thought. Anybody found the one she's talking about? If you find it, you can bring it back next week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remember next week we'll have our final question. Okay, so the two different scriptures. Write that one down. Who wrote that psalm? We are waiting on you, sis. Just a question. I'm not hearing. Mm -mm. Is there an I saw about four mics down here? Praise the Lord. In Numbers 17 and verse 10, when I looked at it, it said, And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. So the rebels were the children of Israel? Yeah. What, what did Moses say to them? We just talk about it. Drinky rebels. Yeah, we're going bad. Well, it seems to me as if they got the name then. They got the name? Yes. Because it's their it's behavior. It's their behavior. They weren't behaving as God's people who were separated by water. Yeah. <coughs> I've been talking about that all, all, all throughout our discussion. Oh yeah, they were rebels. Rebels personality. We're behaving like Christians. So we have got to be careful. Yes. Yes. You go somewhere and you cut line. I always tell them, everybody is hungry. Yes. I'm not cutting a line to get my lunch. I am, I am not doing it. When I go to the bank, I am not asking anybody up front to do my business. Amen. I wait and move up like anybody else. I am not a rebel. Right. Okay? <laughs> I am not a rebel. Hallelujah. Thanks for bringing it back to our attention. You know. Hallelujah. So that's it for tonight, and we give God thanks. Glory to God Almighty. Amen. Can we stand in the presence of the Lord? Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you are good. Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray right now and let us see if we can really connect with God. Let's pray. Almighty God and our Father, our very present help in the time of trouble, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to be here. Lord God, to look back on your words about your presence. It's so good to know that you are with us. Hallelujah, Almighty God. Lord, you're omnipresent and you're omnipotent and you're omniscient. Oh, God, help us to be good examples. Lord God Almighty. Ah, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. So much, so much, so much, Lord. Your presence will make a difference in our homes, in our places of learning from kindergarten right up to tertiary. Oh, Lord God Almighty. As Christians, Lord, we have been called out, called out to serve. 
Oh God, we need a revival in our souls. We need a difference, Lord, in Port Antonio. Lord Jesus, give us a burden, a burden that will keep us awake. Oh, you will speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in our hearts unto you because you are great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I pray, Son of a Touch and Challenged, Lord Jesus, my God, to do more, much more, Lord God. Lord, help us to give up of the spirit of complacency. Oh, we don't know how much longer we have here, Lord Jesus. The writer says, will there be any star, any star in my crown? Lord Jesus, help us to ponder. Hallelujah, to be honest. Jesus, my Savior, Jesus, my Lord, for those who are straying from the pathway, Lord, that they'll find back straight paths for their feet. Pray for young people, Lord, that they be strengthened and hear from you. Pray for our seniors as well. Lord God, my Savior, thou art our present help in the time of trouble. So hear us, we pray. We give a thanks to everyone present here and those online. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you that in these perilous times, people still have a desire to study your word and to wait upon you. Lord God, have thine own way. Help us be effective witnesses, we pray. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming and for sharing. You know we need to have a meeting to plan for that thing we have coming up.